Hello and welcome to the next CGP on my channel. In this video I'm going to talk about the famous Philidor defense. I will show and explain you how it begins and the many different continuation variations. So let's get started. The opening is named after the famous 18th century player François André Danican Philidor. Today the Philidor defense is known as a solid but pretty passive choice for black. It is considered a good opening for amateur chess players who seek a defensive strategy that is simpler and easier to understand than the complex positions that result from an opening, such as for example the famous French defense. So the Philidor defense begins pretty much like the most chess openings does, with pawns e4, e5. And now the white army attacks your pawn on e5 with the move with the knight on f3. And now you defend your e5 pawn with your second pawn on d6. These two moves are the main moves of Philidor's defense. In most of the times, the white army will now answer with the second pawn from d2 on d4, challenging you in the center of the chessboard with attacking your e5 pawn with the second chess piece. And now you have several moves how to answer. The most common black response here is just to trade the pawns in the center. So you take out white's pawn and the white knight takes out your pawn. Normally, black continues with attacking the white e4 pawn with the move with the knight on f6. And white here can just defend their pawn with the development of their second knight on c3. And now you can play the Antoshian variation, which achieves a strong defensive position. So first you develop your bishop on e7 with the idea to do the short castling after. But uh, before in this situation, here, I will just do some moves back. So like this, here, you could uh, not uh, just take out with the knight to trade the pawns. You could also do this with the queen like this. This line was played a lot in the 19th century, century, especially by Paul Murphy, one of the best chess players of his time. So after your pawn on d4 is taken out by the white queen, you attack her, and you do this with your knight on c6. Now it would be pretty smart to just move away with the queen because she's attacked by the king now, but white has another idea. They pin the black knight on c6 with the move with the bishop on c5. Now the black knight can't take out the white queen, because this would be checked then. So here it's pretty smart for the black army to unpin the black knight, and they do this with their bishop. Now the only good option for white that is left is this just to trade here. And now both armies bring out their second knight. First white on c3 and then black on f6. This line ends now with white attacking your knight on f6 with the move with their second bishop here on g5. This knight is pinned now again. The second continuation variation that I would like to show you is the Hanham variation. This is the other main option for black named after the famous American chess master James Moore Hanham. Its plan is to maintain the center tension. A common line begins with not taking out the pawn on d4 here, but rather with the move with the knight on f6 with the attack on white's e4 pawn. White here just defends e4 pawn with the second knight with the move on c3, and now you also bring out your second knight, and you develop it on d7 also to defend your e5 pawn, which is now attacked twice. The common line of the Hanham variation ends now with the both armies developing their bishops. First white on c4 and then you, the black, here on e7. And now this line ends with white doing the short castling. And now I would like to show you an alternative move order of the Hanham variation. After white moves with the pawn on d4, Black sometimes tries the move with the knight on d7. This move is a bit inaccurate because it more clogs up Black's queenside here and slightly weakens f7. 
In most of the cases, white will now answer with bishops e4. And now you have to be very cautious, because white here is trying to exploit your f7 square. Here, if you move with your knight on f6, you lose the f7 pawn against knight g5 of white. And if you play with your bishop on e7 here, you also will lose a pawn. So the best um, the best uh, move here for the black chess pieces is pawn c6. But also this move isn't that good for black because it leaves white with the advantage of the bishop pair after the next moves. So first white does the short castling, then you bring out your bishop on e7 and then you both trade your pawns in the center. So white takes out your pawn and you take out white's pawn. After white's attack now on f7 with the move with the pawn on, uh, with the knight on g7. So they, tr they trick here to move here with the knight and fork the queen and the rook here. So here you have to take out the white knight with your bishop on e7. White could now just trade bishops. So like this and then the queen takes out your. But they have a better idea. They move on h5 with the queen and they threat here with a checkmate on f7 again. So here the only option left for black is to move with the queen on e7 to defend this square here. And now with this move this line ends now. You can now take out the bishop here with the attack on black's queen. However, I think this continuation variation isn't that good, but you still can try it out. That was it and already with this video about the many different continuation variants of Philidor's defense. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, feel free to leave a like there and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Bye!